additives. Then the fruits and the vegetables. There's a definite evidence for reducing certain cancers. There have been more than 2,500 studies about this subject, the fruits, vegetables, and the carcinogenesis. Now, when you do the meta-analysis of all these papers and the research, it was found that if you can consume more than 500 grams of vegetables and fruits on a daily basis, that will reduce your incidence of cancer by almost 25%. It's a fairly statistically significant figure. So what is the mechanism? One is fiber. How does fiber reduce cancer? There are several mechanisms. Number one, that will give bulk to the stools. That will produce bulky stools. So by doing that, it will, it will dilute the carcinogen. That is one. Number two, it will increase the passage time. You know, it, it, sorry, it will reduce the passage time. It will, it will increase, sorry, other way. It will, it will reduce the transit time. It will prevent constipation. So food, the stools will go easily without getting stagnation, getting, getting stagnated. Basically, it will prevent constipation. So the contact time will be less. Contact time of the carcinogen and the uh, bowel mucosa will be less. So that's another reason. Thirdly, they can adsorb, not absorb, but they can adsorb carcinogens onto their surface. So by making bulky stools, by, by increase, increasing um, uh, the rapidity of passage and by diluting with um, um, uh, fibers, you can reduce uh, carcinogenesis by fiber. And other things we already discussed, there are vitamins, minerals, and other biologically active compounds like carotenoids, which will reduce cancer. So all these things are uh, present in fruits and vegetables. So they probably interfere with carcinogenic metabolism, protecting DNA integrity that we already discussed. Now the fruits and the vegetables can reduce incidence of cancers in the pharynx, larynx, lung, esophagus, stomach, cervix, colorectal, and oral, oral cancers. So quite a lot. Then there are food contaminants. This can happen accidentally. This is basically fungal contamination of certain food, basically nuts as well as mushrooms. Now, this is not a major problem nowadays, but I mean, if you go to the ancient history once again, you know, this was described among a community called Bantus in Africa. It is, it is a very, very poor community. They do their cultivation and harvesting during the, during the summer and they store their harvest under very damp conditions to be utilized during the, during the winter. And uh, the, the storage is very, very poor, damp, and there's, a, there's, a, there's aspergillus, uh, sorry, I can't realize. Aspergillus flavors. There's a fungus called aspergillus flavors, which will, which will, which will come and settle down on these damp, uh, damp harvest and produce aflatoxins. And the aflatoxins are very well known to produce liver cancer, right? So that that is the that is the history. But it is not a major contributory factor nowadays. And again, salt and food preservatives. You know, consuming salted, smoked, and pickled food can increase the incidence of cancer. Now they are rich in salt, nitrites, and in nitroso compounds. The classic examples are bacon, salami, and ham. So. I mean, it's okay to consume them once in a while, but not on a regular basis. So that can give rise to stomach cancers, definitely. And there's a, there's a fear that it might increase the incidence of colorectal cancer as well. And there's another fascinating thing which is happening in southern China. They are preparing their fish by using special sources. It is only, only um, um, available in southern China. And due to that, they are, they are ending up in having nasopharyngeal carcinomas. It is only limited to that area. So in southern China, the incidence of nasopharyngeal carcinoma is very, very common because of this particular food habit. Then the spicy food. Some concern about gastric cancer. And again, hot beverages. Now they believe when you consume beverages which are more than 65 degrees Celsius, that may increase the risk of esophageal cancer. Alcohol, that will definitely increase oral cancer, pharyngeal, laryngeal, esophagus, liver, breast, and colorectal. 
because I mentioned uh, alcohol here because some people take alcohol as their food, you know. So that is the reason that I mentioned that. And alcohol per se will give seven calories per gram. So that will lead to obesity as well. Remember, these are empty calories. These are, these are sort of a slang word used by most of the nutritionists. Empty calories means only calories, nothing else. Now, if you eat a bun, you get calories, you get starch, you get a little bit of fat and proteins and all that stuff. But this alcohol will give only calories. You call them empty calories. All right? And then there is a concern nowadays about this ketogenic diet. I just thought of mentioning that as well. When you say the ketogenic diet, which is very much more on proteins and more in fats, but very few carbs or no carbs at all. So this is called a ketogenic diet. So ketogenic diet will reduce sugar reserves, firstly. Then it will reduce your fat reserves, secondly. So altogether, it will reduce your body weight. So it will reduce obesity. And there will be, after that, there will be ketone bodies producing the body. These ketone bodies will introduce oxidative stress to cancer cells. So stress to the cancer cells is very much more than that for the normal cells. So it has an anti-cancer effect, right? And that will, again, reduce your insulin level as well. So that will help, as we discussed early, when there's low insulin level, that will reduce cancer incidence. So I think I discussed most of the things in nutshell. So I think Dr. Enuka I mean, she's a legend in nutrition. I'm just a podium as far as the nutrition fact is concerned. So I think I have laid the foundation for Renuka. And Renuka, you can now build the rest of the story. And thank you very much for the attention. Thank you, Dr. Balavadana. Uh, for the interest of time, we would leave to take up questions last. Uh, the next speaker is, uh, I have already introduced her. She is Dr. Renuka Jayatis. She is the visiting consultant medical nutritionist, National Hospital of Sri Lanka. And she would be talking to us on the truth about food and cancers. Over to you, Renuka. Yeah. Thank you, President. Uh... Uh, Dr. Padangun Ratna, President SLM, he's a more legend than me about anything. Uh, so all the participants, I think uh, Dr. Balbadhan has mentioned a lot of things. So I thought in the, because he has given you the science and the, what's really going on. I thought I will do with what, what's happening in Sri Lanka. So how are we going to change our things to hold this cancer epidemic or uh, to reduce it or to keep it static or something. So that's what my main uh, uh, concern in this uh, lecture. So I thought these are the first 10 leading cancers in Sri Lanka. So you can see that breast cancer has become the first leading cancer. So all these 10 cancers, according to our cancer registry, unfortunately, we have only 2014 data. It may have been now changed at the moment, but this is what available. I have picked up from the cancer registry. So the, with that, I thought I will take uh, the first one that Dr. Balavardhan has mentioned, the one consistent finding that excess calories from any source leads to the weight gain and which will increase the risk of multiple cancers. So how, what's that happened to Sri Lanka? What are we facing? So with that, I mean, I thought I will just highlight few things in Sri Lanka. This is the scenario of our adolescent and our women in the country. You can see our all the our districts, uh, overweight obesity is more than 40% in uh, except very few districts. And most of the districts, our prevalence are very high. And even adolescent, when you see the trends from 2003 to 2017, how it has gone up. So then you can imagine our overweight and obesity with this weight gain, how much of cancers we have to expect in the future. So this is the Sri Lankan real scenario at the moment. And then the second one, I thought I should really look at what has happened to Sri Lanka. What, was, what were we in 1961? 
and how we are at the moment 20, uh, 2017 was the last data we have available. Uh, so that there is an increase of uh, total calories that uh, we are taking, but from the, we have the, from over these years, it has gone up to about 630 kilocalories. We are now taking more than 1961. But at the same time, our uh, lifestyle has also changed. Now we are no more active so that we don't need this much of uh, energy. We need less energy, but at the same time, we have uh, more energy we are getting. So this shows our problem is getting aggravated. So at the same time, when we look at what, how are we really increase these calories from 1961 to 2017? So our contribution mainly came up from the uh, wheat and their products and then the refined sugars and our rice consumption actually has gone down a bit little. But um, because most of the time I know clinicians are really focusing on the rice, rice, rice. I think it is not the rice that which has uh, really affected our things. It is a wheat. Wheat and products have come up in the things on top of our rice, as well as a refined sugar curve one. At the same time, a little bit of alcohol has also, as Bal Bal Bardhan, Dr. Balwardhan mentioned, as a little bit of alcohol has also come into the uh, play. So this is the what uh, we, our um, Sri Lanka, what we, uh, which has happened to us. And then, the, so according to that, our main first recommendation, be as lean as possible without becoming underweight. So it is also important not to get underweight, but be lean as much possible. So this is something we have to really kind of to practice. And then the second one. So... Uh, I was thinking about, the, I think Dr. Palavadhan was mentioning about the sugar glycemic index and the all hyperinsulinemia. So these are the other major factors in Sri Lanka because we are, we love uh, sugar. So uh, most of our, uh, thing, all our traditional food and everything are uh, sugary. But now most of the things people are eating, uh, consuming daily. So some of the things we like, kaun cookies and things we consume only the one time per year. Now it has become everyday kind of food. So then the, our sugar consumption has gone up and the, you can see these two pictures. And the one is our common uh, beverages and the packet of milk. So these are the two common um, beverages uh, everybody uh, take at the moment. So the WHO recommend only the six teaspoons of sugar per day. You can see that if you have some of our beverages, even with the one um, uh, glass of beverage, we exceed our recommended amount of uh, teaspoons of sugar. So then the, what will happen to this excess sugar? So it will be added into the our excess weight gain. And the, these are the th things actually that finally ended up with cancers and everything with the hyperinsulinemia and the, all these things as well as our favorite milk packets, that these are the kind of things our kids always have uh, prior to their tuition classes. Everybody have the packet of milk and the, they drink. So you can see how much of sugar with the one packet these kids are getting uh, when compared with our recommended one. So some, some, thing, some uh, uh, milk packets provide about 80% of sugar uh, what we need from the one packet. So with that, our main concern is the glycemic load. So which is very important this uh, to prevent this hyperinsulinemia as Dr. Uh, Balwadhan mentioned, mentioned our, our cases, all the body have proliferation the and the, uh, for the, these cancers. We have to always think about how frequently that we are consuming these things and the how much of carbohydrate in a serving and the how much of blood sugar will go up with this one and how rapidly it will go up. So these are the important factors we have to think about. And then how can we really reduce this uh, um, uh, component with having, I mean, we can eat all these things, but at the same time, reducing the, that uh, level. So the change in our things, you can see that having the chocolate and the, with the watermelon, and then the, uh, how can we really, uh, because as a watermelon, it has a high sugar, but when you eat it because of the fiber, our load is low. So these are the kind of uh, practices we have to, change in our diet. Uh, so as uh, uh, things, our uh, second recommendation I am really uh, emphasizing is uh, avoid sugary drinks and the limit sugary food. And especially um, uh, drink uh, most of the time the water. If the people do not like to drink water, they can add some fruit slices and the cucumber and the oranges and the all sort of things to uh, 
make it flavor, own flavor, and the, have the things. Then the uh, other things we, I think in Sri Lanka, we have to now go for the no added sugar for the children less than two years of age, which is very important as Dr. Balavatana mentioned, this hyperplasia and the uh, cell hyperplasia at this stage, they, it will never go uh, down. So we have to really think about this no added sugar uh, for the children up, uh, less than two years in the future. Then the next one, as Dr. Um, um, Dr. Balavatana mentioned, the total fat. And the, here we have to think about how is this total fat consumption in Sri Lanka and the, what is the fat and the, especially the fat intake in childhood and adolescent, which really carry the greater risk than the, this during adulthood. So this is something very important with our adolescent and the type of fat, whether we are having the saturated or unsaturated or trans fat, as, I, as uh, he mentioned that about the repeated um, heating of the um, oil that which will really create the trans fat as well as a bakery one. So let's see that our adolescent, what are they eating? You can see that all the uh, fat, these are daily, they are daily consumptions. You can see that 70, almost 80% of them eat fried food. So this is not a kind of very good uh, scenario for the uh, future aspects. And then the, uh, what is our saturated fat uh, rich? You can see that coconut consumption has gone down when we uh, compared with the 1961 to um, 2017 data. But at the same time, saturated fat containing milk consumption has gone up with the vegetable oils and the poultry and the other things have also come up. But at the same time, the trans fat containing food, you could then see the how much people are consuming biscuits in this country. It's like a, a kind of meal people are eating biscuits. So these are the new things which have come up, up to our diet to enhance this cancer risk. So the, these are the things we have to always look at and how can we change our food habits. Um, then the, um, so with that, uh, the main the recommendation is the limit high fat and the processed food and especially the limit in the fried food and the processed meat, you know that these are very popular, the sausages, salami and the bacon and the hot dogs and things. It may be once a week or once a month, but not every day for the, your diet. Then the, another famous thing, the fruit and vegetables, all of us know that it is good, but uh, this is our adolescent, how much they eat in these fruit and vegetables. So we are talking about the fruit and vegetable about 500 gram per day. So whether people are eating. So for that to see whether, whether, whether it is not available in Sri Lanka or the, whether people are not consuming. So you can see from 1961 to 2010, our vegetable supply and the fruit supply has really gone up in the country. That means we have plenty of vegetables and the fruit for the people to eat 400, not even 400, even 800 gram per day. But still, the, uh, this is the way that our adolescents are consuming it. So with that, we had to look at the recommendation, eat a more variety of vegetables. This is very important. All colors are very important. All the types are very important. Not the same kind of everyday eating carrot and beans and the bean and carrot and the dal. So that is not the way. You, have, you need the variety of the vegetables as well as, but that you have to limit the fried and the starchy vegetables. This is very important. And the frying the vegetable, most of the time vegetable people eat with the frying concept. So the vegetable there are, you have to concentrate on about five types of vegetable. One is green leaf vegetable, other one is yellow vegetables, other one is pulses because pulses in Sri Lanka, we eat it as a vegetable. And then the starchy vegetable, like this post dill and all these things are starchy vegetables. So you, those are the other things we have to put it into our um, plate. And the other kind of vegetable like beans and the, all the other vetakolu and all sort of things will come into that. So everybody has to really concentrate on these different type of vegetables adding to the diet because it will give the colors, it will give all phytochem, phytonutrients and the antioxidant and everything will come automatically without much hassle. And the other one, I thought that I have to really insist on this uh, unpolished rice. Because Sri Lanka people are now currently eating a lot of polished rice and the small grain polished rice, which will really enhance the glycemic load. Uh, so this is the, as well as refined flour. The, we have the white refined flour in the country and the now pulses consumption, it's going as only the vegetable uh, concept, but not as a kind of meal concept. So the, this we know, um, as uh, Dr. Balavadhan mentioned, especially we had to look at the improved the gut health and the bowel stasis. And the, this constipation has become a huge problem among uh, kids. 
So the, you can always think about our local remedies like aralupeti and things to uh, once in a way to have a kind of this constipation and the, then the bowel stasis will really go out of window that um, uh, within one day. So these are the other local remedies we have to use in the country. So the next one is, um, as Dr. Balavadhan mentioned, I thought I will really, because uh, we always tell no alcohol, but I know everybody have alcohol. So therefore I thought that at least I should insist on the, the what is the limitation. So at least uh, people who are drinking, they can really limit in that concept. So, the, but anyhow, our recommendation is consumed and uh, not no alcohol, but at the same time, if they are having that, they have to really uh, fix into the only one drink. One drink is uh, something like beer and the spirits as I think in the slide. And then the diluting it and the, but still the water is the best beverage. Um, uh, the, and Dr. Balavardhan mentioned about the supplements of this ACE uh, concept, but this ACE concept came up in the long time back, but after that the extensive research came up and then the recommendation is don't use any supplements to protect against cancer. Especially the, this beta carotene, uh, it says that with the supplement, there's increased risk of lung cancer. Even the vitamin E, there's no uh, benefit even for the reduction of cancer risk. So therefore it's best thing is to get it from the food and drinks. Um, the another one, the, um, this anti, uh, like uh, pre radicals as well as oxidative stress. And the, these are the things we can't prevent because we are living in a polluted environment. We are living in the kind of uh, our environment. So, so many things which happen to us. So sometimes some of the free radicals and the oxidative stress, we can't prevent. So the, how do we prevent this is adding the antioxidant rich food into our daily diet. So this is very important to um, look at. Then the what are these antioxidant and the, all these vitamin C, carotene and these phytonutrients and the things as well as the fruits, adding the fruits into the thing. You will automatically get your antioxidants or whatever the things which are inside your body it will fight with the things and it will minimize the cancer cells production. So this is very important. So, but Dr. Balavardhan must be not knowing aflatoxin is still the problem in Sri Lanka because we are a kind of, uh, our country is very highly humid country. Uh, still our food storage is not good. And the, our chilies, uh, this is the biggest problem with the aflatoxin because chilies we use every day. Uh, so every day, little bit, little bit uh, enter into the other things, the cephalotoxin, as well as the peanuts and the nuts, even the cashew, when you eat, when you get the bitter kind of cashew thing, that is cephalotoxin. So this is uh, something still the little problem in Sri Lanka because our storages are not that uh, really great. Uh, and the, I just want to highlight a bit of the antioxidant-rich traditional food. So these are the reasons our ancient, our grandparents uh, did didn't have much cancers because they were consuming all these nibutu and the, these ugras and things because it has very high level of antioxidants. So, uh, so whenever I think this is high time for us to promote all these things as well as to consume this as soon. I mean, whenever the season comes, people should really consume these uh, things. Another one is uh, uh, Sri Lanka is an island. We have enough fish and the, we have to really consume uh, fish more often. Uh, especially these are having the inverse relationship with, with the rectal cancers and the colon cancers. I mean, I have just put the little bit of, I mean, a lot of kind of um, fish types. Uh, you can go for the small fishes like this kiramin salia and the, all these hurula saudia and the, them. They have very high content of omega-3 fatty acid. So people don't need to really go for the very expensive um, uh, large fish. Uh, the other one is a, a kind of a proper dietary pattern. This is very important and the, how to, uh, how we should really maintain the diet, proper dietary pattern as well as minimizing the ultra processed food. This is very important in this country. Everybody is now geared towards uh, uh, consuming ultra processed food. And the other thing is when we look at the diet patterns, uh, most of the research has found Mediterranean diet is the best diet in the world to reduce the uh, cancers. So which contain mainly the fruits, vegetable, nuts, and legumes, as well as a vegetarian diet. That's another uh, uh, evidences come up with the vegetarian diet. It will also lower the, uh, the uh, especially the all-cause mortality. And then the what are these ultra-processed food? So ultra-processed food really enhance the risk of all cancers and breast cancers. These ultra-processed food are the kind of very dangerous thing. These are the mass-produced packaged breads 
and the packaged snacks. These are very popular among our kids and the sodas as well as these biscuits and the frozen meals and the all these reconstituted meat products. So these are the things which are coming up in the country. So we have to always think about how can we really go back because in US they are trying to go back, but they are too late. But Sri Lanka still we are in the middle. We can always go back. So let's see what is the difference between the our traditional healthy Sri Lankan diet pyramid and the what is and the Mediterranean diet pyramid. Now everybody in the world they talk about the Mediterranean diet, but what is our Sri Lankan diet compared with that? You can see it's almost similar and the, our one, but the, we didn't have only the olive oil, we had the coconut milk and oil. Uh, in addition to the difference between them and us was, and they were having the wine uh, glass and the, we were having the black tea daily. So the black tea had polyphenols and the wine has the resorbit oil and the, there's a little a difference. But these are the kind of very similarities that we are having our traditional diet with the Mediterranean diet. So which shows that we have kind of positive things and the, we can always go back still that uh, to the uh, kind of better level. So the, uh, this is what, uh, when we really look at the 2020 American Cancer Society, uh, they have recommend this uh, can cancer preventive drug. This, when we compared it with the Sri Lankan traditional diet, you can see they can recommend the vegetable and the dark green, red and orange, fiber rich legumes and others. They specifically mention these three things. So when we look at our diet, we, we actually consume these things and the fruits very high and the whole grain. Sri Lanka, we always, uh, whole grain is nothing for us. Everybody eat rice and the, only the uh, un, uh, unpolished rice, it is kind of whole grain, you call. And the, they um, uh, uh, recommend the limiting or not including red meat, sugar sweetened beverages, high processed food, refined grain. All these things were not in our practice. It was very low those days or even none. So I think that we have to really think about how can we shift our diet and the, the, to the, our traditional one, and as well as to not use a kind of um, this uh, kind of uh, devastating kind of uh, things. So in summary, um, we have to say that many cancers are diet preventable. And then the basic lifestyle changes can have tremendous impact on the rates of cancer. And Sri Lankan traditional diet can be modified to prevent cancers. And the continuous awareness is needed on truth about cancer prevention diet to minimize myths. So with that, uh, thank you very much. So if you have questions, we can really answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Renuka. And if you could start from that, uh, the last comment, uh, the last comment being that the, uh, I mean, the myths uh, and the cancers. Uh, so, I mean, maybe that we could, uh, uh, ask questions from the audience from here, uh, whether there are any questions. And I, I, may, I could ask the question from uh, Balavadan here. Yes, you need to go there, but there was not a question. The, uh, we were talking a lot on cancers and diet and our local diet as well. So uh, for us to address this topic at length at this time, had there actually been an increase in cancer incidence here in Sri Lanka? Definitely. So what are the cancers that has gone up in that? Yeah. Now, we don't have the latest statistics. As Renuka said, we have the statistics for 19, uh, 2014. So after that, we don't have the statistics from National Cancer Control Program. But having said that, if I go back to my history, I joined the Maharagam Cancer Hospital in uh, 1987 as a junior registrar. At that time, the number of new cases reported were around 3,000 to 4,000 all over the country. But now, the last year, there were more than 25,000 new cases are reported. So there's a definite increase in cancer incidence. And out of this 25,000, there are other people, uh, there are other categories where they are not reported. There may be people who don't come to the government sector, who take treatment from the private sector. And there are people who take native treatment. And there are people who go overseas. And there's another small um, um, quantity where they don't take any treatment at all. So basically, we believe there can be around 30,000 new cases reported, being reported in Sri Lanka. So there is a definite increase. And now we are, we are going towards the West, you know, Western pattern, Western trend. We are getting more and more of breast cancer, is the number one cancer in Sri Lanka uh, among females. And oral cancer, fortunately, are going down little by little because we are 
we are basically going away from the habit of betel nut chewing but thyroid cancer has become very common among females again that is another cancer which can be related to obesity and um, uh, cervical cancer has gone down the list because of uh, hpv vaccination so but when you look at the total numbers yes there's a definite increase but again padma if i if i highlight this this increase can be it can be multifactorial once again number one is population increase number two we all have conquered all the communicable diseases so people are living longer so you know cancer is a disease among elderly mostly so we are seeing more and more cancer patients in the elderly community number three there is more awareness among patients so they are coming to the picture very easily number four there is better detection now there are various detection screening programs you know although there are no national programs people are aware so because when you when you consider all these factors i think the number has increased uh, actually as well as relative so it's number fifth only that is related to risk factors yes the uh, dr balavadana then api mechara me aakarayata cancer gana katha karanna aahara sambandhava cancer api ोनी කොයර හවස වැට්ටි කියලා නේකම මොන හරි කඩේ කිම හරි ඉන්දියා පටියක් හරි මොන හරි ෆාස්ට් ෆුඩ් එකක් කරන්න ඕනේ gedara කරනවා. ඒක තමයි කෙරෙන්නේ. විශේෂයෙන්ම මේ 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 නගරවද ජනතාව ඉතින් ඒක එච්චර හොඳ තත්වයක් නෙමෙයි. අනිත් ගොඩක් වෙලාවට සොසේජස් බේකන් වගේ හරි ලේසි. gedara ගියා පොඩ්ඩක් බැදගත්තා කෑව. නමුත් ඒක තියෙන දීර්ඝ කා දිගු කාන්න ප්‍රතිඵල එච්චර හොඳ මැති. ඉතින් මම දන්නවා මිනිස්සුන්ට තියෙන ප්‍රායෝගික ප්‍රශ්න නමුත් ඒ දෙක බැලන්ස් කරගෙන අපි දැනගන්න ඕනේ. තමන්ගේ ප්‍රායෝගික ප්‍රශ්න සහ මේ මේ සෞඛ්‍ය පුරුදු ඒ දෙක හරියට බැලන්ස් කරගන්න. The uh, another question with regard to the using agrochemicals on on fruits and vegetables whether yeah. there is an association between uh, agrochemicals අපිට කෘෂි රසායනික ද්‍රව්‍ය අපේ ආහාර සහ පළතුරු වෙනුවෙන් භාවිත කැන්සර් ප්‍රවණතාවය වැඩි කරයිද? उत्तर संबंधता उत्तरी <laughs> डॉक्टर बलवर्धन की वो कीटो डाइट के लिए अभी 
කියන්නේ ටිකක් හරි බඩිකිනි වෙනකන් ඉඳලා කන්න කියලා. දැන් බඩිකිනි වෙන්නත් ඉස්සෙල්ලා පෑම් පෑට පෑම් පෑට ළමයින්ගේ කටට කෑම ඔබන්න පුරුදු වෙලා තියෙනවා. ඒක නිසා අර හැමතිස්සෙම ඒකට ආහාර වලට එතකොට ඉන්සුලින් වැඩිපුර පාවිච්චි කරනවා. එහෙම වුණාම අපේ ඇඟේ එතකොට අර හයිපර් ඉන්සුලිනිමියා හින්දත් මේ කැන්සර් තත්ත්වය වැඩි වෙනවා. ඒ වගේ මේවා දීවැඩියා තත්ත්වයට පත් වෙන්නත් තියෙන හැකියාව වැඩි. ඉතින් මේක නිසා තමයි අර ආහාර වේලවල් කියන එක ඊටමත් වැදගත් වෙන උදේ ආහාරය, දවල් ආහාරය, රාත්‍රී ආහාරය. ඇත්තටම ආහාර වේල් තුනක් ගත්තාම අපිට ප්‍රමාණවත් වෙනවා. ඒ අතරේ අතරින් පතර ආහාර වේල් වලට අපි පළතුරු පාවිච්චි කරනවා නම් අපිට මේ ප්‍රශ්නේ ඉන්නේ නැහැ. දමුත් දැන් කරන්නේ අපි පළතුරු නෙමෙයි හුඟක් වෙලාවට පිටි ආහාරයක් තමයි අපි අතරින් මේ අපේ ස්නැක්ස් විදිහටත් පාවිච්චි කරන්නේ. මේක නිසා වෙන්නේ අර පිටි ආහාරයත් එක්ක සීනිත් තියෙනවා පිටිත් තියෙන නිසා මේකෙන් එන विशेष ඇත්තටම සෞඛ්‍ය මාත්‍යංශ ගොඩාක් මේ ගැන ප්‍රතිපත්ති මේ මේ වැඩසටහන් ක්‍රියාත්මක කරමින් පවතිනවා විශේෂයෙන්ම පාසල් වල පාසල් දරුවන්ට මේ වෙන දැනුම දැනුම භාවිත කරනවා අනිත් එක දරුවන්ට කියනවා අවුරුද්ද වෙනකන් ළමයින්ට මේ සීනි දෙන්න එපා එතකොට තෙල් කෑම පාවිච්චි කරන්න එපා මේ ගැන ගොඩාක් මේ දැනුවත් වැඩසටහන් ක්‍රියාත්මක කරනවා ඊට අමතර ඒක කෙවිසින් අර විශේෂයෙන්ම ඒ ආහාර වලට දාන්න හොඳ නැහැයි කියන ඒ ආහාර වර්ග වලට තියෙන රසායනික ද්‍රව්‍ය කැන්ස් මේ 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 බෑන් කරලා තිනවා ඊටත් අමතරව දිනපතාම ඒ කියන්නේ සාමාන්‍යයෙන් සර්වේලන්ස් එකක් විදිහට ආහාරයේ කොච්චරක් තියෙනවද මේ මේ මොනවාද ඇග්‍රෝකෙමිකල්ස් කොච්චරක් තියෙනවද කියන එක විශ්ලේෂණය කරනවා ඇප්ලටොක්සින් කොච්චර තියෙනවද කියලා කොයි ආහාර වලට කියලා හිටන් බල धनवत्व <laughs> विशेषाइड <laughs> अजिनोटोटी මම මෙතන තව එකක් අර කියන්න ඕනේ මෙතන කොහ කීපෙට මම පොඩ්ඩක් මේ තව පොඩ්ඩක් මම මේ වගේ ක්‍රම අපි ඊළඟ ප්‍රශ්න තමයි lack of physical exercise මොකද ඉස්සර වගේ නෙමෙයි ඉස්සර පොඩ්ඩ ළමයි ගොඩාක් සෙල්ලම් කරා දැන් අපි ඉස්සර ඉස්කෝල වල යන්තම් ෆ්‍රී පීරියඩ් තිබ්බ හැටි ළමයි බෝලයක් අරන් යනවා ඔක්කොම මේ පිටනේට ඉස්සර ඉස් පිටනේ වල තිබ්බේ ළමයි පිටනේ හිටිය ළමයි තනකොල් තිබෙනවා දැන් එක පිටනේ කොහ ළමයි නේ තනකොල් විතර ඇති වෙන්නේ මොකද කිසිම අවස්ථාවක ළමයි සෙල්ලම් කරන්නේ අන්න ඒක ඉතාම වැදගත් මොකද ෆිසිකල් ඇක්ටිවිටීස් කියන එක ඊටම ඊටම වැදගත් බර කන්ට්‍රෝල් කරගන්න කැමත් සමාන මම හිතන රේනු කෑ ගැන කිව්වේ මම හිතනවා ඒක ගැන රේනුකත් සඳහනක් කරාවි කියලා මොකද විශේෂයෙන්ම ඔය කතා විදිවා සඳහන් කරා දරුවන් සහ මේ තරුණ මව්වරුන් කියන මේ තරුණ මව්වරුන්ගෙන් අපි ව්‍යායාම වලට වෙන දායකත්වය ගැන සඳහනක් කිරීම අත්‍යවශ්‍යයි කියලා මම හිතනවා මොකද බොහෝ වෙලාවට විවාහ අරගෙන දරුව හම්බුනාට පස්සේ ඒගොල්ලෝ ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ බර ගැන බොහෝ වෙලාවට නොසලකිලිමත් වුණ නිසා මම හිතන්නේ හුඟක් වෙලාවට අපේ කාන්තාවන්ගේ බර වැඩි වීම පටන් ගන්නේ පළවෙනි දරු ප්‍රසූතියෙන් පස්සේ මොකද පළවෙනි දරු ප්‍රසූතියෙන් පස්සේ අර වැඩි වෙන බර ප්‍රමාණය අඩු කරගන්න පෙළඹෙන්නේ නැහැ 
අනික විශේෂයෙන්ම අපේ තියෙන සංකල්පයක් කිරි දෙන කාලේ වැඩිපුර කන්න ඕනේ කියලා දෙන්න එකට කන්න ඕනේ කිරි දෙන්න වැඩිපුර කන්න ඕනේ එතකොට අර වැඩි වෙච්ච බර වලටත් අමතරව අපි තව ටික වැඩිපුර හැම කිරි දෙන වාරයක් ගානෙම අම්මලා ආහාරයට ගන්න පුරුදු වෙනවා මොනෝ හරි කෑම එතෙන්දී හුඟක් කලාවට ගන්න කිරි වීදුරුවා ඒ වගේ ඒක නිසා ඒ බර වැඩි වීම තවත් වැඩි වෙන්න පටන් ගන්නවා ඒ තත්වෙන් තමයි අපි අර කාන්තාවගේ බර වැඩි වෙන එක පටන් ගන්නේ ඉතින් උගක් කලාට අපි දැක්ලා තියෙනවා දැන් සමහර වෙලාවට දරුවා ස්විමින් එක කරගෙන ගිහිල්ලා දරුවා ස්විමින් යනකන් අම්මා එතන ඉඳගෙන බලාගෙන ඉන්නවා ඉතින් ඇත්තටම ඒ කාලේ පාවිච්චි කරන්න පුළුවන් තමන්ගේ ශාරීරික ශාරීරික ව්‍යායාම එකට ඒ තමන් ඉඳගෙන ඉන්න කාල සීමාව අනිත් එක පවුලක් විදිහට අපි ක්‍රියාකාරී දේවල් වලට යොමු වෙනවා නම් ඒක දරුවටත් මේ හොඳ රුකුලක් වෙනවා අනිත් එක එක පවුලේ සමගියටත් හොඳ රුකුලක් වෙනවා ඉතින් මං හිතන්නේ අපි මීට වැඩිය විශේෂයෙන්ම ක්‍රියාකාරී භාවය ගැන වැඩිපුර උනන්දු වෙන්න ඕනේ දරුවන්ට අපි කියන්නේ දවසකට පැයක්වත් සෙල්ලම් කරන්න ඕනේ අනික අනි වැඩි හිටියෙක් නම් දවසකට පැය භාගයක්වත් සෙල්ලම් කිරීම ඉතාම සෙල්ලම් නෙමේ මොන හරි වැඩ මේ ඇවිදීම වගේ මොකද ක්‍රියාකාරීත්වයක යොමු වීම ඉතාමත්ම වැදගත් වෙනවා दुमेटी <laughs> අපිට දුම්මැටියක් කරනවා කියලා දුම්මැටියක තියෙනවා මේ 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 රසායනික ද්‍රව්‍ය අපි එකතු දුම්මැටියක් ඉරුවාම මේක රසායනික ද්‍රව්‍ය තියෙනවා 2000ක් ඒ 2000 එක එක පෆ් එකක් තියෙනවා රසායනික ද්‍රව්‍ය 2000ක් ඒ 2000න් 50ක් පමණ කෙලින්ම පිළිකා සාධක ඒකේ ෆෝමලින් පොඩ්ඩකුත් තියෙනවා ඒ කියන්නේ සිගරට් හොඳටම බිවොත් දෙන් බම් කරන්න ඕනේ නේ මේකට ඒ සම්බන්ධ මේ මේ වෙනකොට ඒ සම්බන්ධයෙන් කිසිම කෙනෙක් කතා කරන්නේ නැහැ නැහැ මම මේ කියන්නේ මේ පොත් වල දෙන්නේ මම ආයුධ ගන්න එක ගැන කවුරුත් කතා කරන්නේ නැහැ අපි දකිනවා ප්‍රමාණයට වඩා සමහරලාට මත්සාර වලට ෆෝමලින් යොදා ගන්නවා කල් තබා ගැනීම සඳහා මේ නැ ප්‍රමාණ වල කියලා කරන්නේ ෆෝමලින් කොහොමද පාවිච්චි කරන්නේ පාවිච්චි කරනවා පාවිච්චි කරන්න බෑ කල් තා ඒක 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 නැහැ මේ පර්මිසිබල් ලෙවල් එකක් දැනට ඒක දාන්න බෑ දැනට පාවිච්චි කරනවා ඒක 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 කවුරුත් ආර පණ දනුව ආරම කරන්නේ නැහැ ඒක යොදා ගැනීම සඳහා ඒක ඒක නැහැ මේ ලෙවල් එකට වැඩි වෙන දානවා කියන්නේ ඒක කිසිම ලෙවල් එකක් නැහැ ඒක දාන්න බෑ ඒක තහනම් ද්‍රව්‍යයක් ආර इनफॉर्म <laughs> कर <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think uh, we uh, have had a, a fairly informative, uh, fruitful discussion, uh, timely discussion on uh, food uh, and the cancers. I mean, the, they both contribute uh, to a significant extent to the escalating incidence of the non-communicable diseases, which is the leading cause of deaths in Sri Lanka. So uh, on behalf of the expert committee of the non-communicable diseases uh, of the Sri Lanka Medical Association, I'm very thankful to Dr. Uh, uh, I mean, both, for both speakers, particularly Dr. Uh, Renuka Jayatissa for organizing this and for uh, Balavadana for accepting our invitation. And then for all of you, Uh, for making it an uh, interactive session. Uh, so I think, uh, thank you very much for your participation. There is participation, uh, a good number of uh, uh, participants online who have joined with us and who sent questions for us. Thank you very much for your contribution. And thank you very much for you uh, who are here uh, uh, for the contribution and for being present here. Thank you very much. To our appreciation as Usual acceptance. There are two uh, documents that need to be uh, presented to both speakers as customary from the Sri Lanka Medical Association. It's the documentation of the uh, presentation to the Sri Lanka Medical Association.
Tuesday, I'm going to have five minutes.